today uh, taking a step further from topography into combining topography with biomechanics and uh, obviously that has happened because of the combination of uh, the pentacam with the corvus so before we go into it what is the real need for this we obviously have better screening criteria now we are slowly seeing that there is a greater and uh, definite shift towards a need for understanding the biomechanics of the patient we also have procedures which claim to increase or uh, increase the biomechanics like in cross linking or which decrease the compromise on biomechanics in spile and we have combination procedures which have been discussed and despite all the multiple parameters which so many of our equipment give us wonderful parameters like the overall d as well as uh, from other shimeflug devices while these are excellent in differentiating normal from keratoconic patients but where we really need as far as refractive surgery is concerned is the ability to be able to differentiate normal from form first and there still at least about 8 to 10% even the best of indices lag behind by about 8 to 10% in the ability to be able to differentiate normal versus form first cases so with the advent of corneal biomechanics uh, which earlier started with the ora and now you have the uh, corvus which is available and essentially it is an air puff which causes a deformation and as you can see here in this picture the deformation is more when the cornea is weaker or softer and based on the amount of deformation and using a very high speed shimeflug uh, camera which captures multiple images from the initial state to the state where the cornea becomes the of slightly flattened the surface which is at the first point of applanation going on to the area of high is concavity and then the rebound based on all this various parameters have been brought about uh, based on the applanation length the deflection amplitudes the deformation amplitudes and as well as the bend radius so i will not go into the details of each of these in fact the uh, uh, the entire dynamic corneal response has about 22 parameters in all which is provided by the uh, corbis machine but uh, but the some many the issue with the earlier part of corbis was that while we had a lot of parameters they were fairly sensitive but the specificity was quite uh, poor and it did throw us off uh, on a number of occasions with the advent of the newer indices which is essentially the cbi which takes into account a number of parameters but lays emphasis to four major ones one which is the da ratio which is actually essentially the deformation amplitude from the 0 1 and 2 mm comparing from the center to just outside the center you have the integrated radius as well as the ambrosius relational thickness along the horizontal profile which goes from temporal to nasal and then the most in, uh, recent the novel stiffness parameter now this stiffness parameter is essentially uh, it's a new uh, index which has been developed uh, been looking at it quite a lot i think uh, rohit sir will also have some uh, wonderful inputs on it Uh, seems to be fairly quite sensitive and is a new index which has been added which actually takes into account the amount of pressure required for the deformation which is corrected for the biomechanically uh, detected that is biop biomechanical iop and in relation to the amount of deformation that it has caused on the central cornea so overall these indices has led to the development of the comprehensive cbi and uh, a 0.5 or beyond 0.5 is the index which which is the value which has been uh, given as what you would consider as abnormal and something you need to look into so just to take you through a couple of quick examples this is an example with a patient with an absolutely normal tomography overall d being white but if you look at the cbi was in one was not even borderline was in the extreme in a cornea which had absolutely normal uh, tomography looking at the fellow eye the patient had frank ectasia in the fellow eye these are really the uh, patients which we want to detect and uh, biomechanics probably is taking us towards this subsequent to this there was the uh, uh, advent of cbi was this publication by vincigera's group where they showed 12 eyes with unilateral kc absolutely normal tomography in the fellow eye which had keratoconus where uh, while the uh, while the pentacam was not able to detect anything abnormal in the fellow eye the cbi was able to show a grossly abnormal values and uh, this was definitely a step uh, further and taking it even further where some cases you had where the cbi was 
either over diagnosing uh, biomechanical weakness or at times even failing to show up on certain cases where we really feel felt that there was a need for combining these two technologies that is the marriage of tomography along with biomechanics and the uh, shine flug tomography along with using the shine flug uh, images provided by your uh, cbi uh, by your corvus uh, with along with artificial intelligence came the new index which is tbi which is essentially a combination of the uh, cbi values along with the bad d values the kmax values which are already given and each of them have a slightly different weightage to give rise to the tomographic biomechanical index which puts together both tomography as well as biomechanics now taking you into a little further into detail of tomographic biomechanical indexes initially there was this study which showed that this under the roc curves uh, uh, where which were validated that tbi was actually having a far greater uh, sensitivity as compared to cbi and bad d so just to allude to this very important study uh, published by ambrosio and uh, in combination with vincigera's group this is a study conducted in both brazil and italy together where they had a large cohort which comprised of 480 normals 204 keratoconus but this was the possibly the cohort which was most valuable and very difficult to find 94 patients who had very asymmetric ectasia that is ectasia in only one eye but it is this fellow eye which we classically diagnose as or we classically call as form first keratoconus whenever we are evaluating or validating any index so these fellow eyes which are tomographically normal but have ectasia in the fellow eye and looking at that when they compared each of these indexes the bad d when it came to the very asymmetric ectasia fellow eye was almost similar to that of normal cbi gave a very wide range of values was but uh, was not able to differentiate very clearly from normals as compared to keratoconus or uh, very asymmetric ectasia bad di is similar to bad d is just an index which makes it uh, for easier computational they have converted it to, to an index which is between 0 to 1 but even that was not very efficient but when you looked at the tbi the values are much tighter it was almost similar to differentiating normals from kc normals to very asymmetric ectasia as well as the fellow eye of very asymmetric ectasia this index was able to differentiate it from normals so this was definitely uh, a real step ahead and something which we were not able to have any time before i'll close with this one particular case where uh, just to provide a, a contrarian view where a patient with an extremely thick cornea Uh, so thick cornea that i had to look at the endothelium and to rule out that there was no fuchs dystrophy which this patient did not, did not have completely normal uh, uh, bellin ambrosio ectasia display cbi is completely normal tbi was also normal but this was the fellow eye of that patient who had almost moderate to severe keratoconus so we still have a way forward and probably something like brilliant microscopy which is able to actually not look at the overall cornea of the whole globe but actually individual layers is probably the step forward yes it is uh, we've been talking about it for a long time uh, and it is still in the development stages i don't know if it is going to see the light of the day in terms of actually reaching out to the mass public but probably a device which has only been able to show us that cross linking is also possibly effective being able to differentiate the anterior cross linked cornea from the posterior cornea which is not cross linked so in that way this is uh, probably the only device which has been able to show us so plethora of new investigations are really uh, available to us today and uh, early diagnosis and uh, uh, which will really help us in timely in uh, planning appropriate interventions thank you so much for your kind attention